Hello, NEET aspirants. Welcome to Niraja's Biology Academy. You are with Ocular Niraja Prakash. Hope you are preparing well for your examination or you are at the final stage of your preparation. Of course, equal to downstream processing stage of your preparation. This video I am uploading exclusively for the students 2021 12th standard passed out students who are now in RM batches, where in that particular time, neither practical examination nor board examinations were conducted. Both the exams were suspended in several states. And then if we observe NTA bulletin of 2022, in the page 73 and 74, you will come across certain chapters which are where we have to extend our preparation linked with the top lab manual, especially two chapters. One is morphology of flowering plants. Another one is locomotion and movement of class 11 biology. So especially chapter five and chapter 20 respectively. Here, if you come to information bulletin of uh, NEET UG 2022, so here related to this particular area, structural organization in animals and plants unit two, where the morphology of flowering plants, fruit and seed to be dealt along with the relevant practical and also practical syllabus. And then if we come to the locomotion and movement chapter, where it is also given skeletal muscles and then contractor proteins, everything to be dealt with that of relevant practical syllabus. Now I am uploading this video to in order to bring the awareness for the students, um, what are the areas that we have to focus related to lab practical manual. Some areas are altered, some concepts are added, and some concepts are ambiguous in nature. To bring the awareness for the students from which areas we will we use to get specific questions to link it with that of lab manual. And then once in 2018, we got a question related to pinus, where winged pollen grains were present in case of which of the following plants. And then second, in one of the previous year question paper, I have observed that the joints they have given, but the options in the form of match the following. But the examples which was given related to those joints were not there in NCRT book which was given in lab manual. Let's peep into the slightly altered uh, and then added areas and ambiguous areas of uh, lab manual concepts with that of NCRT textual concept. Related to the morphology of flowering plants, I am emphasizing only so certain areas which are deviated right from the NCRT concept. And I have highlighted all those concepts. Here, this is related to the shape of radish, beetroot, carrot, and dahlia, which was not given in our NCRT, which was there in this vertical lab manual. Related to the mechanical support, climbing roads, which are formed from the nodes and also internodes, which are seen in case of beetle and also in case of black pepper. So, which is there added in NCRT, added to the NCRT concept. And then these we are having as usual. And if you come to the questions related to this particular chapter, particular area, healthy root nodules are pink in color. What is the reason? It is mainly associated with like hemoglobin. And if you come to the second question, so how come we can differentiate? It's a root, a modified root, which appears like a stem. So here roots generally, they, they are positively geotrophic in nature and they are achlorophilous in nature. If we come to the prop and the still fruits are aerial in origin, yet they are called roots. Why? They are not with the nodes and internodes. And let us move on to the modifications of the stem. Some maximum variations are not associated except for one or two areas. The stem for vegetative propagation. So here runner, stolon, offset and suckers are there. But related to the example, 
especially related to the strawberry. In NCRT, they have mentioned this related to the rangnam, whereas in case of lab manual, it related to the stolons. And then these are the examples where synodon, a grass linked with the top, rangna, and then offset. So as in the case of NCRT, icornia and pistia, succus, chrysanthemum, banana, and pineapple. And then for protection, if we come, we are having these two examples, bougainvillea and also citrus. But in, in, in this lab manual, Dorenta, pomegranate, and then acacia, bear, and also prosopsis are given added examples. For support, in this practical manual, we are having white is a passion flower and also pegonia. And then related to for photosynthesis, philocladis example, which was there in NCRT. Cladode, it's a type of loclade with one so internode only we can see in case of asparagus. And if we come to the questions related to this particular area, in case of zinger and rhizome, scaly leaves are present at nodes and then they are associated with nodes and internodes. And there are some plants where the tendrils are present which are modified auxiliary buds which are mainly meant for support. And then we in NCRT gods, cucumber, pumpkin and in watermelon, we'll come across all these so examples in NCRT book. And if you come to the leaf modifications, much variation is not associated, everything for protection characters, but in case of RG moon, so which is mainly meant for check the transpiration where they are highly reduced. Parental placentation is observed in case of RG moon. So here, this is an example which was added. And for mechanical support, so mechanical support, lentin is an example which was added. And then, for trapping insects, the mostly insectivorous plants are present in an area where the minerals are less in quantity. In such cases, where availability of nitrogen to those plants is possible only by trapping the insects, or they are associated with the proteolytic enzymes, which can digest the insects, thereby they can take up those amino acids from those amino acids nitrogen is utilized by those plants. So insectivorous plants, which we are having in NCRT book. For trapping insect, what is the new one added? Bladder wart, which is utricularia. For mechanical support, lentin is a new example, which was added. And then in our NCRT book, we are having acacia. So Australian acacia. Philo, which is a modified pitule. You will come across the philo even in case of a nepenthes. Let us move on to the answer for these two questions. So stem tendril and then a leaf tendril. Stem tendril, it is a modified stem branch, which is a thread-like in shape. And the leaf tendrils are modified leaves or the leaf parts. So leaf parts. So we have come across in case of a tendril, in case of a nepenthes, where the petiole is modified into, petiole is nothing but the part of the leaf which is modified into the tendril. And then next, if you come to the tissue, stem tissue and leaf tissues are present. Origin from terminal part or from the axillary buds, whereas here entirely for leaflet is modified into the tendrils. And if we come to the next question, so where differences between the spines and arms are thorns, spines are technically modified leaves. Thorns are the technically modified stems. Spines, they often occupy same position. Thorns are usually formed in the place where the buds, especially axillary buds are present, whereas thorns are endogenous in origin. Example I gave and then Duranta. And if you come to the axon stem, it is an important area where we haven't come across this particular concept in the NCR team, especially related to the inflorescence. It is an extensive area. And then let us see what are different types of inflorescence that are associated. So here types of inflorescence. The inflorescence are classified based on the position on the shoot system. So especially four different types of inflorescence. So terminal inflorescence which ends with the flower. So the stem it ends with the flower. 
and such type of inflorescence will come across in case of poppy seeds. Axillary inflorescence at the axis of the leaf and stem, the flower is formed. So petonia and also show flower. Show flower is nothing but chain arrows. But between two nodes, the flowers they arise and it is known as an intercalary inflorescence. So calistemon is an example for intercalary inflorescence. Califlorous inflorescence or ramiflorous inflorescence. The flowers are formed from the older, older branch. Such type of inflorescence in case of um, theobroma, coca plant and also octocarpus which is a jackfruit and also cannon ball tree and if you come to the different types of inflorescence racemous inflorescence vimous inflorescence and the special type of inflorescence i want to give you the gist what is there in the lab manual so racemous inflorescence in case of racemous inflorescence arrangement of flowers will occur in an acropital manner they are categorized into three types where inflorescence with long uh, so long axis and then inflorescence with a shortened axis and inflorescence with the, the axis which is greatly reduced will receive mustard raffanus and also crotalarium compound racine cassia and also delonyx regia spike elongated peduncle is present but the sessile flowers are absent so example for simple spike amaranthus and also calcitermon so graminae members they possess a person compound spike where example for spadix is musa zea maize and also colocasia compound spadix is observed in case of Palm. In case of catkin inflorescence, if an elongate peduncle is present, on with the sessile flowers are present. So, example, Morus alba. Now, let us come to the racemous inflorescence, in which the inflorescence axis is a shortened. Inflorescence axis is reduced, and then which is in the form in the form of a, a so disc. So variations with respect to the length is absurd related to the petiole in case of corin in all the flowers they arise right from a particular area and such type of inflorescence is known as an umbel. And then here you will come across a simple umbel in case of allium sepa, compound umbel is absurd in case of a coriander. Peduncle is greatly condensed in case of head inflorescence or in case of capitulum where this is known as peduncle over which different types of flowers are present at the central disc. Disc florets are present and towards the peripheral region ray florets are seen. And if you come to the cymose inflorescence, cymose inflorescence where the main axis terminate with the flower. And hence, it shows the limited growth. And these are different types, uniparous and then biparous and also multiparous inflorescence are seen. So our polycacial sign is observed. So monocacial sign is observed in case of show flower. And there is a biparous or dicacial sign is observed in case of a jasmine, dianthus and also in case of exorum. Multiparous or polycacial sign is observed in case of calatrophism. And these are special inflorescence, cyathema, and then hypanthorium, verticillaster inflorescence. So compound resin, you will come across in case of a drumstick and also in case of mango. A compound umbel is observed in case of coriander. And then compound spadix is present in case of a palm plants. It is observed in case of palm plants. Let us see the questions related to this particular area. How a floret differ from that of a flower? And then, so observe a pomegranate fruit and note whether it has developed from solitary flower or from inflorescence. Here, if we observe the sunflower, it consists of several florets. At the center, disc florets are present towards the peripheral region. So ray florets are present. In case of pomegranate, the inflorescence is a dicacial sign. Unica granatum is the scientific name of a pomegranate. Pomegranate consists of two different types of flowers. So where hermaphrodite, bisexual flowers, and also so functionally male flowers are present. And the fruit of the pomegranate is known as aril. In case of syngenaceous flowers, where filaments are free, and then anthers are united. That will come across in case of sunflower. And Sinandra's condition is absurd in the members of Cucurbita where the 
anthers and also filaments are totally fused. And then related to this adhesion, epipetalus and then epiphyllus condition are there in case of a NCRT book. And then arrange attachment of filament to the anthers. So they are categorized into basic fixed as in case of mustard, adenate as in the case of macello, and also dorsifix is observed in case of passion flower. Versatile anthers are seen in case of members of graminae. Related to the dehiscence pattern, we will come across porous and also longitudinal. So where porous pollen grains are released through the pores in case of brinjal and also in case of potato. Whereas in case of longitudinal dehiscence is absurd in case of chain arrows and also in case of cotton. And then if we come to the position of ovary, everything is there in NCRT. NCRT book, we can come across all these uh, so concepts. There is no much variations related to this particular areas. And then apocorpus condition is absurd in case of a rose. And then syncarpus condition is absurd in case of a lady's finger and then tomato. So here in this particular area, I have highlighted these specific areas which are so somewhat exhibiting variations related to the NCRT concept. A new term in pros, in pros, and then epical pores are present. If the anthers are directed towards the so gynecium, then that condition is known as an intros. If it is towards the petals, such condition is known as an extros. Few examples what are added. So here we have to go from solanaceae members belongs to the class dicotyledons and then subclass gamopetalae and series bicarpellate and then order polymoniales and then physalis, capusberry, solanum, xanthocarpum, pentacari and then so hyosimus which is a henbane, mitania, somnifera which is ashwagandha and then system nocturnum which is known as a night jasmine. And then these are the added examples which are which we will come across in the lab manual. And then fabacy members, dicotyledons, polypetalae, and then calciflore series, calciflore, and then which belongs to the order fabes, facialis mu, and also facialis auris, and then vulgaris. So vulgaris, which is known as some um, ras masses, abrus precatorius, which is known as a crab's eye, and then uh, so medicaga sativa which is known as alfalfa, which is used as a fodder. And if you come to the Liliaceae members, so belongs to the series Caronidae and then order Liliaceae. The examples are Heterosmilax, Ica, and then Smilax species and then Lindium, Candidum, all the examples that are given. And if you come to the area locomotion and movement term where small ambiguity is associated related to this particular chapter so here we have we are having the human skull human skull is associated with the two sets of bones cranial bones facial bones but in our ncrt book we are having ear ossicles or also sensory capsules are also associated and then cranial bones are occipital parietal frontal temporal sphenoid and also ethmoid bones are present and a u-shaped bone known as hyoid bone is present and the maxilla and pre-maxilla of the facial bones, they are involved in the formation of upper jaw. And then mandible forms the lower jaw. And they are associated with the sockets where the teeth are lodged. Teeth are not considered as a bones. And a zigzag manner, sutures are seen in case of cranium. The suture is present between two parietal bones. Between the parietal bone and occipital bone, lamboid suture is present. Between parietal bone and frontal bone, coronal suture is there. The occipital bone has very big foramen, which is known as a foramen magnum, through which the middle oblongata it emerges out and it runs backward as a spinal cord. So dicondylic type of skull, where the occipital condyles they are lodged on the sockets that are associated with the first vertebra, which is known as a atlas immovable joints are present in the cranium and the mandible is the strongest bone of the body this is an ambiguous area but as it is there in this specific area we have to read as such it is a mandible is the strongest bone in our body okay well and good and then next let us come to the vertebral column so 26 serially arranged so units are present which are known as a vertebrae and then singular is known as a vertebra 
and then the first vertebra is known as eclos and the second vertebra is known as an axis and this first vertebra eclos it articulates with the top of the occipital condyles and it forms a condyloid joint if we come to the parts related to the typical vertebra it consists of a centrum the modified part of the notochord so generally what we have studied so notochord is modified into vertebral column that we know very well so these organisms are known as vertebrates but here notochord is modified into the centrum part of the vertebra and then it is associated with the transverse process lateral projections which are known as a transverse process as centrally associated neural canal is present and then so on the mid dorsal side a neural spine is present two two successive vertebra are associated with small projections if the projection is located toward the anterior region then it is known as prejygopophysis if it is located toward the posterior region then it is known as a post jygopophysis so here with the help of these jygopophysis these vertebrae are linked with each other and then next if we come to the rib cage and the sternum they are associated with the sockets so in order to lodge the ribs and then which is associated with the first sternum bra is hexagonal in shape and it is so which is known as so manubrium and the lowest sternum bra is known as a xiphoid process and then if you come to ribs nanam it is an ambiguous area ambiguous area the concept is entirely different when compared with the top ncrt concept so here i have highlighted the ncrt concept too so ribs are of two types one is the so thoracic ribs and the sternal ribs we haven't come across in the ncrt book so it is a thoracic rib and the sternal ribs are present thoracic ribs articulates with the top thoracic vertebrae and then thoracic ribs are attached to the sternal ribs with the help of ligaments so thoracic ribs are attached to the sternal ribs with the help of ligaments okay na no? 12 pairs of thoracic rib each rib is thin flattened in nature capitulum and tuberculum capitulum articulates with the centrum and then tuberculum it articulates with the transverse process that was given here in this concept and then next seven pairs of thoracic ribs are attached to the sternal ribs and the last five pairs of the thoracic ribs do not articulate with the top sternal ribs okay we know this also very well in ncrt they have given eighth ninth and tenth ribs are considered as the false ribs but here they have given for last five pairs of ribs which do not articulate with the top of so sternal ribs are called false ribs concept variation ambiguous area sternum forms the floor of the branchial basket also uh, much variations is not associated with respect to the pectoral girdle but so here the so spine projects as a flat expanded portion known as a acromion and then below the below the acromion a depression is present which is known as a glenoid cavity and in the pectoral girdle reduced process is present which is known as a coracoid process this is the variation and then next if we come to the pelvic girdle pelvic girdle is commonly known as hip bone ilium articulates anteriorly with the top of the flat transverse process with the top of the sacral vertebra and then bones of the hand and also four limbs bones of hand or fore limb so totally 30 bones are present in the fore limb the hand is associated with the 27 bones fore limbs are categorized into upper arm fore arm and the hand so upper arm is associated with the humerus it consists of a small crest which is known as a deltoid ridge for the attachment of so muscles and then it consists of a foramen distal end is associated with the foramen and a trochlear process and this forms elbow joint with that of radius and ulna 
and then ulna it has more developed and it is associated with the oly cranon process and then bones of the leg or in he come to the hind limbs so femur is the longest bone proximal end has trochanter to which the quadriceps muscles of the thigh are attached the distal end has two condyles they which articulates with that of triangular bone patella it is a triangular bone so here this femur articulates with the tibia the end of the femur is associated with the two condyles tibio fibula consists of two separate bones tibia and fibula in the shank region maximum variations are not associated here at this particular region and if you come to the joints so different types of joints are present in case of uh, so organisms where they are immovable joints slightly movable joints and synovial joints cartilaginous joints fibrous joints and also synovial joints so here related to the synovial joints which is known as a diarthros diarthros and they are movable in nature different types of synovial joints are there gliding joint pivot joint i have highlighted only so what are the variations that are associated pivot joint is present between atlas and axis and then here the odontoid process is associated with the axis oly cranon process odontoid process trochlear process keep in your brain with bones this particular processes are associated and then ball and socket joint malleus and incus of the ear ossicles they show the ball and socket joint between incus and step is hinge joint is present if you observe this ball and socket joint more than two planes the articulation is observed and then so this is an important area here more than one plane hinge joint and then between incus and step is hinge joint is present pivot joint or rotatory movement is observed so rotatory movements where axis and atlas and we can also come across between radius and alum so pivot joint is present gliding joint is observed where the sideways movement among the tarsals and among the carpals saddle joint is observed movement in two planes two planes and is observed in case of thumb now you can plan accordingly how to blend the concept of ncrt with lab manual concept to bring angiospermic results meet you in the upcoming videos thank you